Good evening. On behalf of the Architekturzentrum Wien, I would like to welcome you all to tonight's event, IBA Wien Meets Architects. We started the series in partnership with IBA Wien, the international building exhibition in 2017 to bring international architects to Vienna whose projects take new and visionary directions. So far, our guests were architects such as Anna Pamakundo, Dorte Mandrup, Kasuyo Sechima, NL Architects, the Berlin-based initi initiative House der Statistik, and the latest Pritzker Prize winners, Lacaton Vasal. This year, we are entering our fifth season of this series with the general topic, coexistence in the city. Since Vienna is one of the fastest growing cities in Europe, the urban society becomes increasingly diverse. One of the big challenges here is to build lively neighborhoods with socio-cultural infrastructures that invite people to meet and strengthen the collective awareness of one another. In Red Vienna, or in the so-called Rotes Wien, socio-cultural infrastructures were firmly integrated in the planning of new residential quarters. So how can this proven practice be transferred to today and what kinds of architecture enables people to live together well? One successful example in this case is Sesc 24 de Mayo in downtown Sao Paulo in Brazil. Some of you may know it since it was shown as one of the case studies in the framework of the AZW exhibition Critical Care in 2019. I still remember when I first saw a photo of this project with this huge swimming pool on the rooftop where many different people were sitting um, at the pool, I instantly was fascinated and curious and wanted to know more about it. This was not an inclusive club such as Soho House where members have to pay high fees to use the facilities exclusively. No, this project shows that careful architecture takes the residents and their needs seriously and provides equal access to facilities and infrastructures to everyone in order to ensure a good coexistence. Besides the swimming pool, SESC 24 de Mayo hosts a library, a medical center, a canteen, a cinema, a theater, an ex exhibition space, a space, spaces for dancing and sports, all stacked on 14 floors. MMBB Architects transformed a former department store in downtown Sao Paulo into a leisure center with cultural care and sports facilities. Besides a various mix of usages, this building provides also inspiration in dealing with the increasing vacancy of commercial infrastructures where we are going to face even more in the close future. Tonight we are very honored and glad to welcome Marta Moera as one of the par partners of MMB Architects to give us a more precise insight in their work and the much acclaimed project SESC 24 de Mayo. MMBB Architects were founded by Marta Moera and Milton Braga in 1990 in Sao Paulo, and their work includes social housing projects, urban development projects, as well as numerous educational and cultural infrastructures. In SES 24 de Mayo, as well as in some of their other projects, MMB architects collaborated with Pritzker Prize winner Paulo Mendes da Rocha, who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. As an educated architect, Marta Moera is professor at the design department of the School of Architecture in Sao Paulo since 2008. Tonight, she will be not here on site, but she speaks to us live from Sao Paulo via video conference. As usual in the series, in addition to the lecturer, we are inviting a responder who will highlight the potentials of the shown projects and place them into the local context. I'm very pleased that Harry but um, Wolfmeyer, sorry, from the Viennese office, Harry and Sally, 
agreed to join us as our local responder in the discussion tonight. The discussion will be moderated by architecture journalist, author and co-curator of the current running exhibition, The City Through a Female Lens, Wojciech Chaya. Dear Wojciech, I'm very happy to welcome you to this event and I'm very much looking forward to this exciting discussion. But before we start, I will give the podium to Reinhard Zeitlinger from the IBA Wien, our cooperation partner. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Thank you, Lene, for these welcoming words. And dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the IBA Vienna. The IBA Vienna is the first building exhibition to be held in Vienna. What takes center stage is the topic of new social housing. Considering the long tradition in the fields of social housing in Vienna, Vienna thus sets itself the task of developing groundbreaking proposals for solutions and approaches to the challenges of our time. Everyday patterns of behavior and processes are to be questioned with regard to their relevance and, if necessary, renegotiated. New stakeholders and key players are getting involved, and housing and social, so uh, social policy instruments are to be newly or the first time interlinked. As a consequence of the thematic orientation of IBA Vienna, the development of social neighborhoods as products of social interaction comes to the fore and becomes essential content of our building exhibition. The International Building Exhibition Vienna 2022 was launched in February 2016 and will conclude in the fall of 2022. One key objective of the IBA Vienna is to achieve a lasting impact through innovative projects and processes. To enlarge our horizons, we also look beyond the borders of Vienna, of Austria and of Europe. And so, in cooperation with the Architekturzentrum Wien, a very fine series of events has been launched from the very beginning of the IBA Vienna, inviting international architects to address current issues of the IBA Vienna. These architects might be in a position to fire up the local discourse and inspire new steps based on their experience and their expertise. In this sense, I would like to thank in advance our guests on the panel for today's lecture and discussion. I wish us all an inspiring evening. Thank you. And now the stage is yours, Marta Moreira. Here with you, I would like to thank Vien for the invitation, Angelica Fitz, Lenny Banks, and uh, well, I'm going to share my screen and let's start. Can you see it? Uh, today, I'm going to show you two projects developed at our office in NDB. One of them in collaboration with the architect Paulo Mendes da Rocha. I choose, chose to talk about them because both, in different ways, deal with the construction of common ground, shared spaces that can embrace the unpredictability of life. But before, I would like to show you some images of São Paulo and to talk a little about the city in order that you know better the context in which this work was developed. As a first characteristic, I think we could say that São Paulo is a modern city. Although founded almost 500 years ago, the city that today we face was basically built in the 20th century. Today, a little more than 100 years later, the greater São Paulo metropolis has more than 20 million inhabitants. São Paulo, which was a small city in the first four centuries of Brazilian history, 
became the main economical and cultural center of Brazil during the 20th century. As a result of this brutal development and of the related radical transformation, the city today has almost no buildings from centuries previous to the 20th century. Although in the center of the city, we can find many eclectic buildings, most of them important ones and urban reference, like the old railway stations, for instance, the central areas of Sao Paulo are constituted and characterized by large groups of modern buildings, built mainly in the 40s to the 70s. In this image, we can see a Copan building by Oscar Niemeyer and large infrastructure. A second characteristic relevant to this contextualization is that São Paulo lies within a hydrographic basin on a plateau delineated by a network of water courses flowing through a hilly terrain. The metropolis is directly related to the trunk of the waterway system, in this case, catchment basin, which determines a constellation of discontinual sectors. The railway system, established from the second half of the 19th century, in search for available flat and cheap land, choose mostly trajectories parallel to the main rivers. We start in the irreversible process of building the wetlands as an habitable space. And so we finally arrive at the location of the project that I'm going to show. The Red Wing is the location of Paraisopolis Favela, where we developed the Antonico Creek urban project and the red dot is Sesc 24 de Maio, located in the historic center of São Paulo. The Antonico Creek Urban Project was part of the Favelas Urbanization Program that was being carried out by the municipality of São Paulo. Paraisópolis is the city's second largest favela, with about 70,000 inhabitants. This is a very well consolidated community that has been living in this place uh, in the last hundred years and inclusive during the pandemic times now, uh, in lack of the initiatives from the municipalities, they organize a very uh, well uh, organized system of protection of each other. It's a very consolidated community. This occupation arose as a result of the invasion of a fairly irregular subdivision on an irregular topography with some rather steep features, with which the urbanization plan never related. So that was the original subdivision, and that the occupation plan on top of it. Cutting diagonally in this part here, across the orthogonal urban grid, there is a creek that is now largely underground due to construction that have successively advanced over its natural water course. Antonico Creek. The Favela's urbanization program involved a wide-ranging set of urban infrastructure works social equipment, and the new housing. Sanitation and drainage were included in this scope as actions providing needed structuring for better conditions of habitability throughout the favela. The reurbanization works realized for Antonico Creek would require the removal of irregular dwellings on areas of the creek unsuitable for construction, resulting in the main structure for articulating the public spaces. Consequently, 
this project could be one of the principal tools for promoting urbanity in the new district that will emerge at the end of the process. However, the house being an urgent and an immediate need, the main question to be faced is the future, future maintenance of the open areas, avoiding new irregular occupation. The proposed study articulates two spheres of projectual investigation. The first, we operate on redefining the paradigm of the urban infrastructure. The second, we operate on the construction of patterns within the popular mindset in regard to the use of the space. In this image of a densely occupied part of the city, the only areas left empty are the soccer fields. The maintenance of the fields is because they are recognized as a value to be maintained by the community as a whole. At the same time, the fields necessarily have a clear and relatively precise geometry, so that's possible to play football. The challenge in reprogramming the grid in search of a new model will be to encourage the establishment and some of some sort of public domain associating the open spaces with the uses of great value to the community. First of all, to determine a non-buildable track, an open area bordering the canal, constituting a stripe with a minimum width of 10 meters. The aim is to assure, ensure access to the channel for the indispensable maintenance service. At the intersection of the main commercial axis, a large area left free may give way to the creation of a square and equipment for quality use. This open stripe will be reprogrammed, giving rise to an ample set of enhanced use values. The strategy one that we sought is to creating an unquestionable value then, a good path to mobility. The passage of vehicles, other than service vehicles, will be intended. It will be the district's main internal axis of mobility, since it runs along the smoothest topographical terrain to be found in Paraisópolis. Outside the district, it will be extended up to the most recent subway line, connecting the population to the city's smart transit system. As an alternative means of transportation, a bike path will be constructed, connected to a network of paths for is seen by the city's master plan. The flow of pedestrians and bikers, which should be intense, will be the key factor in the dynamics empowering and protecting the use of the street. The strategy to, to create a symbolic value, making the river attractive. In the state of Sao Paulo, the current guidelines for the elaboration of new drainage system discourage the covering of rivers and creeks. This principle, in the case of a tropical fluvial system, requires the availability of extensive flat marshes for the widening of the water course during heavy rainfalls. Such areas are no longer available within densely urbanized areas, where the social costs of removal are very high. When we started the project, this was the original drainage project for Antonio. The solution proposed by the sanitation engineers is based on the deepening of the water force channels in order to receive high volumes. This, however, 
results in a channel that is linear and empty most of the time. The water at its bottom, far below the level of the surrounding area, which is very disastrous because it then ends up creating an insurmountable barrier in the city. The project seeks alternatives for reconciling the favela with the water, no longer considering them as a problem, but rather as something pleasant and positive in the population's day-to-day -day life. It is based on the premise that it's possible to reconceptualize the model of the drainage system in a way that meets the technical demands of the hydrological system while also promoting the construction of urbanity in the places it flows through. Our report this point to a possible distinction between the various flows that share the same drainage bed. We can classify these flows into two groups based on the criteria of compatibility with the high density urban condition which characterize the areas crossed by the Antonico stream. One, we characterize this flow in two types. One is what we call the project flow, and there's two there's a flow where the speed and volume of water are within parameters that allow the proximity of the population with the water, without the risk of drowning or being taken away by the current. That is a flow that will become apparent in the open channels, narrow and shallow, not represent any kind of conflict and avoiding their presence as sutures of the adjacent urban fabric. The other one is the, what we call the excess flow, are all streams whose water volume and speed are not suitable to live with a dense urban situation. It is the flow which is proposed to stay away from the daily life of the area, buried and discolored to meet the limits of the rates of return for a hundred years. The channel project no longer seen as the production of a mere technical artifact. We create a linear, linear mentality made up of a succession of private and public spaces open to countless possibilities of resignification by the population. The strategy three is to make the public space readable and active. The stream in its original condition represents a big problem to be avoided. The buildings along it turn their back to the water. Being the main passage of people, being a living and active public space, what was previous and desirable becomes a huge interest. Considering that a clear design of the resulting space is fundamental, we imagine the installation of a limit bank that is built of precast concrete elements located in both longitudinal edges of the project area that mark the limit between public areas and private areas, and are also support for public installations such as lighting. Those elements determine an extension bank that is the area made available for addition in existing buildings within the windowless, windowless facades revealed by the demolition and the limit bank. It aims to generate a new front for the Antonix open public space system, ensuring a desirable urban dynamic, which is necessary to manage the place. Once the houses are enlarged and transformed into commercial and service establishment, a new urban front will arise, boosting the local economy along its course. That is the cross section. And giving a zoom in, that is the original situation, the creek, the non-buildable track, 
the removals, the lower channel, the upper channel, and those, the expansion and opportunity areas. So it depends on the size of the resulting place. We can have just an expansion, expansion or a commercial unit or a housing unit or even a collective housing mix or institutional use. So that was the first uh, study I, I wanted to show you. And now we are going to speak about SESC 24 de Maio. Uh, SESC 24 de Maio is a project by Paulo Mendes da Rocha and uh, with our collaboration. SESC 24 de Maio, as I showed in the beginning, is located in the historical center of Sao Paulo that is immensely dense, diverse, and hosts extremely varied cultural manifestations. A hundred meters from Praça da República, so that is SESC 24 de Maio, that's Praça da República and the São Paulo Municipal Theater. As the city developed, a number of other important centralities were formed, but the historical center continues to be a reference for the metropolis as a whole. This is an image of an elevated road that disastrously cuts through the city center. On weekends, it is closed to traffic and becomes a place for several other events. People appropriate the space, as is the case here with these water games. Architecture is made by people through the, through the creative enjoyment of possibility as they present themselves. This sketch by Paulo Mendes da Rocha, is a nice image of an idea of the city. It was made long before any prospect of designing the SESC 24 de Maio. In the middle of the Praça da República, two concrete buttresses on, on the ends of a hundred by a hundred meter suspended volume, a public swimming pool that at the same time forms a marquee which provides shade for varied events, a party, a market, a meeting, an urban beach. To imagine a set where the swimming pool is a fundamental part of the program, in the center of Sao Paulo, meant for us to imagine the biggest possible pool in the sun between the dense mass of constructed buildings. It is amusing to think that the real estate market builds small pools on rooftop apartments that are marketed as a high luxury few can afford. And this is a popular public swimming pool with a capacity for 400 people simultaneously. It is worth explaining here what type of organization the SESC is in Sao Paulo. This image is of the wonderful Sesc Vintipate, sorry, the wonderful Sesc Pompeia, designed by Lina Bobardi, who perhaps many of you know. Sesc is an institution that oversees 38 activity centers that bring together various fields of expertise, articulated through a variety of cultural, educational, sports, leisure, and health programs. SESC activities are guided by its educational ethics as well as the pursuit of broader social well-being, in which the term culture is understood in its full spectrum. In this sense, the full accessibility to the spaces and contents offered by the institution enhances the democratization of cultural values as a form of individual autonomy and the practice of citizenship. It was saying as well that uh, SESC is not a public institution. 
actually is a private organization that in another hand works with the public money because they work with a percent, a small percent of the taxes that the commerce and services pays in Sao Paulo. We believe that the process of transformation and development of six such as Sao Paulo is made by slowly adapting to the changes of customs and the way of life of the societies that build them. Sesc 24 de Maio, in the same way as Sesc Pompeia, occupies an existing building that in this case, the building used to be the flagship of the Mesla department store and both Sesc projects represent exemplary challenges of architectural intervention that redefine the whole of beauty heritage in the city. The shop was on the ground floor and first floor and was intensely frequented, but the other 11 floors were administrative support and storage. The structure has an ambitious stance of around four meters between columns and low ceilings, making it enormously difficult to adapt to the new program demand. Demolition was seriously considered as the building had no relevant importance from a historical or an architectural point of view and its adaptation presented so many difficulties. But it was there, as beauty heritage and the transformation, the occupation of that heritage is fundamentally important in the transformation of cities, as I mentioned. The fact that the building is organized around a central void in the lot allowed us to imagine the possibility of the adaptation we desired. On this plan, the demolished areas are shaped in sepia. The preserved building that uniformly developed over 13 floor, floors is in white. The structure represented in gray are previous existing, new structures are in black. In the central void, there are new four columns and slabs distributed on some of the floors for a new structure which holds the volume of the swimming pool, built completely independent of the existing structure, as it had to be. A section where you can clearly see the new structure as a building inside the old one. The central void also strategic, was also strategic for the organization of the construction where a crane was installed once the entire lot was taken over by construction. That is the last floor of the existing building. The swimming pool above it, in addition to the concrete pool, a large set of steel structure along the three limits of the new upper volume complemented the solarium and what corresponded to the depth of the tank accommodates the pool's changing rooms. The set of activities is organized vertically, with each floor dedicated to a specific program, but which are related in sets of two or three floors. In some cases, the central void is kept create an association between two floors, as for example, with exhibitions and art studios, or with sports. In addition to the formal vertical circulation system of elevators and fire escape staircase, there is a ramp system running the entire length of the building as an extension of the sidewalk. It is like a continuation of a walk in the city where one finds different spaces, a cafe, a library, a square, a beach. It is one way of experiencing the building in a fluid, festive manner without constraint.
the ramp itself is a place of meetings and games. The Centro Novo, as this region of the historic center of the city of São Paulo is known, became what it is today between the 30s and 60s, with the construction of a notable set of modern mixed use buildings with the ground floor occupied by extensive shopping archives that cut through the blocks internally. The desk ground floor was built in a similar fashion, as a freely accessed square interconnecting two streets and characterizing the entrance foyer. In the image, black areas represent the set of possible routes through the city. The corner was the access to Mesla, the original shop. Although the building is no longer accessed from here, a large window onto the street was created. This one of the access of Rua 24 de Mai. This is the ground floor plan. The double height in Tenor Square I described earlier with the reception volume forming the corner. I would like to mention here that when we made our first visit to the original building with the SESC director, Danilo Miranda, Paulo Mendes noticed a small neighboring building on a 7 to 20 meter lot. I'm talking about this one here. Especially small for this part of the city, which was for sale. He suggested that the SESC should buy the building and made a beautiful comparison, saying the Nesla building will be the ship, and that the small annex should function as a task boat that approaches the ship for maintenance and refueling. The SESC purchased the building, and this annex is where all equipment, toilets, change rooms, and storage is installed. A service annex, the task boat. The idea of the annex is always beautiful in architecture, the creation of your own neighbor. The annex can always be seen from the ramp and vice versa. The original building already had a basement used as a car park. We installed the theater here, which is still connected to the city by a six meter wide staircase. It is a second theater without a shaped downstage or a stage box, which coexists with the set of existing and the new columns respecting the limits and the structural foundation of its neighboring building. It has a nice feature, which is that the access level develops around the entire void of the stage and audience. The café and foyer. The original basement level was lowered by three meters in the central portion to form the void of the stage and develop the stalls, respecting the limits of the existing building foundation. Dressing rooms are on the same level in the annex building. On the first floor, offices, administrative offices overlook the street and the internal central void. The Sesc restaurant is well known and popular, and at the big times a queue is stretched along the ramps. I was told I was told the other day that there was a street vendor selling sweets to the people waiting in line. I found it very funny because it's a completely urban situation. That was exactly what we wanted for that. 
buildings in this part of the city are built in alignment with the lots, creating a pleasing proximity between them. On the other side of the street, we can see the red gallery. The conviviality is part of the CESC program. The low ceiling heights require a series of strategies to accommodate the various installations. The circular construction on this floor houses the exhaust machinery for the kitchen on the floor below. That's one strategy we assumed for the project in order to accommodate all the installation that was necessary. This floor, the conviviality floor, is open without frames. Free of any specific program and function as a strategically elevated square. The library level complements with the restaurant and conviviality a group of programs. The frequent columns were often used as support for furniture, as a strategy of transforming an interference into something supporting an effective use. The exhibition hall, with a double height space in the center. The art studios, immediately above, and again, to make the exhibition floor below free of any kind of interference, the air conditioning machine house is located in this floor, in those areas. The dental clinic, it is curious because it says he offers this health service among all the other cultural and sports programs. From the start, all installations were imagined to be visible, but as work progressed, we gradually restricted them down further. The electro panels that you see in this picture were initially going to be placed in a cupboard, but we left them like that. The sports floor also have a double height central area. The changing rooms overlook the void that directly connects the two floors. This section shows one of the side alignments of the building, which in place aboots the navel, creating a situation of balcony distributed through different floors with double or even tri triple heights. They are like elevated gardens. This is the conviviality floor, the sport, the swimming pool solarium. It is actually a lateral void that runs along the entire building. The dance floor, the four central columns support a set of bars and mirrors. This is the last level of the original building, clearly noticeable because all we see now is the new structure. It is the pool garden and complements the swimming pool program. Again, it's like a square with a cafe. As the pool is one of the few places with control effects for safety reasons, the reflecting pool on this level is a free water play area for everybody. We hadn't imagined this initially. But from the first day, people went into the reflecting pool and freely appropriated the space. Today, it is one of the most successful programs.
the pool changing rooms are accommodated around the pool structure. The last stretch of our ramp leads to the pool. The pool is 25 per 25 meters, the largest possible in this situation. I took this picture during the construction at a moment of rest, and I like it very much. People look for a comfortable situation in the most unexpected ways. We were also invited to design the furniture for the building. The piece you see in the picture is one of those tools that are made on site to solve needs that arise. It is beautiful to observe the ingenuity and grace of the strictly necessary. The tripod, three points that define a plane, is the best way to relate to the often irregular flaws of the construction. The piece we attach it on top of it is a support for all types of pipes or wiring during the installation. This piece serves as motivation for thinking about the design of all furniture. Sesc 24 de Maio receives on average 10,000 visitors per day, which is a lot of people. The maintenance and beauty of the furniture is an important issue. This is why we choose steel as the basic material for execution of the furniture. We also like the idea of using construction labor, the solid bar, the metal sheet, the welds. The piece found in the construction became table legs with a different part for attaching the surface. The production of prototypes was essential. It still has an interesting elasticity, but it needs to be well doted by the geometry of the design. The first table we produced, wool boat, in such a way it was nicknamed the trainer. The triangular table allows for a number of interesting articulations. The chair, with and without arm, which is stackable. And the sofa, that is a curious piece to design for a quality use context because it's such, such a domestic piece. We imagine a base structure that accommodates four pieces, but it is like a system. Once again, the elasticity of steel associated to a certain geometry makes the backrest accommodate different types of people. The gap between the two plates accommodates the spinal column. The association between seat parts can occur in various ways. They can be the same or different colors. The furniture can be varied by creating new associations. From a maintenance point of view, one seat could be removed to be repainted, for example, without compromising the entire effect. There is a nice association when the direction of the piece is reversed. The furniture no longer has front and back. People sit face to face. In Brazil, we call this piece a namoradeira or conversadeira. I think namoradeira can be translated as lovely maker. A side table is an accessory piece that can take the place of a seat. The armchair is the same seat on an individual stand. Change the stand once again, using a different geometry, the chair becomes a low chair with greater inclination. And thank you very much.
trimming. Head shot. Okay. Mm Martha, can you see both of us? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Hello. Nice shirt, Wojtek. Thank you. Beautiful shirt, Wojtek. <laughs> so, the two of you, Martha and Herbert, you have uh, a little bit in common. The way you're approaching architecture, the way you're approaching building, the way you're approaching to find... Uh, defining new innovative spaces. So I'm looking forward uh, to the discussion now. Um, Heribert, first question to you. Uh, when, when you look at the favela project that Marta uh, introduced to us and also the SESC project, what do you think of it? What, what does your feelings say when you look at those two projects? Yeah. Uh I would say so both projects uh, are about one of the main goals that architecture can reach uh, it's uh, to produce, produce community yeah a communi community space for the people or produce the community itself yeah I think that's uh, one of the most important thing in architecture uh, and that we can reach. Uh, if we can reach that, uh, we have won quite a lot, I would say. Yeah? And uh, both projects uh, are about uh, this topic. Yeah? So that's uh, the first thing uh, what I think about. And <laughs> the second thing is, so <laughs> when I saw then, uh, so when you talked about the uh, SESC project, then sometimes I realized, so I don't, I, I, I don't see any green in it, yeah? So uh, in, in <laughs> I don't see any plants, yeah? So I'm a bit smiling now because uh, here in uh, Vienna, uh, so most of the projects we are building now, yeah? So they are very green, yeah? So we have some structure sometime, we put some plants, some, some trees in it, yeah, so, uh, and then plants are growing up, so you could have the feeling it's not so important what's behind, it's much more interesting that it's green, yeah. So, <laughs> I would like to ask you, is that a topic for you, or is that, so, how, how do you see that, yeah? Well, I think uh, that is a topic, but not in the case of that's 24 de Mayo. The green in this area of the city, I think, is guaranteed by the Plaza da Republica, that is a big part of the green, and about the park, that they are not very many in Sao Paulo, but they are around. Mm -hmm. I think in the case of that's 24 de Mayo, we were more uh, interested in showing mm -hmm. the relation that the cities around, you know. It's a very, very dense part of the city, a very alive uh, part of the city, inclusive, it's a point, a place, a reference for the African, there is a big African community, immigrants in this part of the city. So, uh, I don't know what will you were interested is to establish a more close relation among the buildings around, you know. So you were interested in that uh, you can see just very close, uh, I, I told, uh, the rag gallery just across the street. You have a very close relation, you know, with the SESC building. This transparency is what we were looking for, you know. There, I mentioned the Red Gallery because that is a particular building that is this uh, in counterpoint 
for the African community. And uh, that he was, was very interested to make relations because it's not uh, always easy to negotiate this common ground, you know. It's not very easy sometimes to make people comfortable enough to come to the building and to frequent the building, you know. So, Thank you. Uh, in the case of 24 de Mayo, we were not uh, interested in the green, actually, yeah. Yeah. in so, this particular case. I'm not saying it's not important, I think it's fundamental, yeah. but in this particular case, no. Yeah, no. So, for me, it's a wonderful project, yeah. So, I, want, I just wanted to ask you because it's, yeah, here in Vienna, it's really, I don't know if you know some buildings, architecture, what, what's built here now in, in Vienna, in Austria, or in Europe, yeah. And so, yeah, I saw this, and that was my question, yeah. So, but uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful project. I really like it. Yeah? And I also think that uh, it would be interesting here, also in Austria, to, to discuss about the things, about the relationship between architecture, the building, and the landscape, and the green, yeah? So uh, it's really a co conceptual approach to it, yeah? Thank you. So, Thank you for the green aspect, and I think it's nice and beautiful to see that uh, we are able to achieve a high-quality social place without green facade, and that this is possible too. I would like to focus a little bit on on the social aspects in Sao Paulo and social aspects in Viennese housing. And can I interrupt you with a question? Yeah. I would have had one more question to the project in Parasopolis in the favela. So okay. before maybe we go okay, to the go next ahead. step, sorry. <laughs> uh, because you could, so that's for me a question more or less, okay, there's the creek running through, yeah. And uh, I would say you can see it as an infrastructural intervention, yeah? Or, yeah, first of all, yeah? You could see it as a public path, yeah? As a, also as a boulevard, yeah? As a landscape project. Sure you don't, I think so. <laughs> and uh, as a, maybe a water playground. So what, what is your first uh, what is your first focus on, yeah? So I think you reach everything with that, yeah? You, you reach a public path, you reach a bit of a landscape, you bring the water again, the nature, it's a boulevard, but it's also an infrastructural intervention. So what is your maybe first focus in on it? What is the most important, you think, to, to, of this intervention? Well, I think the, the, the most important, uh, in my point of view, and the most difficult uh, thing about it was to create uh, something that had meaning for the population, you know, for the community. That we talk very much of uh, this participative project. And sometimes those processes is not very easy to build because and it's fundamental i think it's impossible to do an intervention like that without the involvement of an active involvement of the community because as what i said in the beginning if you open the necessary space because it's necessary you know when you have the heavy rainfalls the houses go through the water because it's a, a risky area, really. It's a risky area, so it's necessary that you open some area and to remove those houses from there. But if you don't don't do don't construct an uh, an idea of how the intervention can be with the people that live there, it is impossible to make something like that. Because in the next day, it's going to be a house again on top of it. Because the, the house is the urgent necessity. So I think this project is a reflection, a, a research actually, how we can make 
this negotiation, you know, uh, with the several agents that are involved with the community, that is the main uh, agent, I mean, and, and how can you build an, an idea of what can be uh, and what can be in a desirable way, you know? Because the people, you see, it's a steep topography. It's an impossible topography. It's very, very steep. So for people, what they want is to arrive quicker at, at, the, at their house, or is able to arrive at their house with a, a baby crane, no, baby, this, this, this kind of automobile you carry a baby. I forgot the name in English, sorry, but you understood. So what they want is to be able to arrive at home with the supermarket shopping without being a, a struggle, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think for us actors, how can we translate all the, the what the, the desires into something that you can design them? Uh, in a technical, inclusive solving, a technical question. So people want to arrive early at the house, to have more free time to be with their family, to have, to have leisure and everything. But how can you translate the, these desires into something that is technical and uh, construct, constructible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Harry, thank you for uh, reflecting those two projects, the Favela project and also the SESC. Uh, we were talking now a little bit about the technical aspects, so water in one case and no green in the other. And I would like to use this discussion with you, Martin and Harry, to talk a little bit about the social aspects and also to compare the Brazilian way with the Austrian way. Um, and one way, uh, one question I would like to ask you here in the audience, are you familiar with what the SESC in Brazil is? Because if not, then I would just tell you, maybe um, Matt has described it a little bit, but it's a completely different system than in Austria. So if you're not familiar with it, let, let me just describe it to you in 30 seconds. Uh, the SESC is a certain kind of a trade union or a labor union in German, you would say Handelsgewerkschaft. Uh, it's called the Servicio Social du Comercio. So it's a social service um, for uh, commercial, for people who work in commercial, in commercial sector and their families. And it's a social service, and we saw it in the beautiful plan in the section where the SESC within the last decades um, contributes dental care, medical care, um, co-working spaces, cheap restaurants, cheap cafes, swimming facilities, sport facilities, theaters, cinemas, and so on. And all the members and clients of this Handelsgewerkschaft, of, of this trade or labor union, are allowed to use it. And of course, we also have those unions here in Austria, but I wouldn't be familiar of any uh, trade union project that puts such buildings into the city. So this is something that is a huge difference between Austria and Brazil. Uh, my question to you, Marta, is why do you need those buildings and why do you need those services so why is it not uh, the public hand that, that builds the, that kind of service? Because you mentioned that SESC is a private thing. And Ter Harry, the question to you would be, would that kind of service or would that kind of building be possible in Austria? So Marta, first question to you. Uh, why is the SESC necessary and why is it not the public hand that builds that beautiful, great service for the people? Well, uh, first of all, uh, just to complement what Wojtek, Wojtek said, uh, SESC is for the people that work in commerce and service, but not exclusively. Actually, the SESC activities are open for everybody. 
uh, you don't have any kind of uh, uh, constraint to arrive inside the building, to go to the restaurant, to go to the cafe, or even to to go to the sports activities and things like that. Well, I think SESC is so important because the uh, public service is very poor, actually, in that sense. Uh, we don't have a big public infrastructure as good as SESC can provide. Because SESC is a private organization, that's a fact. But also, they work with public money. So it's a kind of mix in the, the middle way of uh, private and public, you know, because they work with a percent of the taxes, as I said, what is huge, can you imagine? A, per, a small percent of all the taxes that's paid, all the commerce and services in a metropolis like Sao Paulo is already a huge money. And the, what that can do is, is to manage this money in a very, very good way. So, because it, it's really a very good organization. But it's in the middle way uh, between public and uh, private, you know. Okay, thank I you. I think it's a, a, a very interesting solution. I can't imagine Sao Paulo without the Fed. It's impossible to imagine, you know. Okay, thank you. So, thank you also for the correction that the SESC is open also to the public. And you mentioned that there is a percentage of the tax money, and with that money you build that kind of social infrastructure. And we saw in the pictures that these are public spaces where people just hang around, where they eat, where they drink, where they work, where they, where they do whatever uh, makes public life a public life. Harry, would that kind of building, such as SESC Tower or SESC Institution, work in Austria? Yeah, I think that's the main question, yeah, so, um, because I have been once, ten years ago in Sao Paulo, and uh, uh, also when I saw now you, the pictures and your presentation, so uh, the impressions came very close to me. <laughs> because it's so dynamic, and it's very dynamic, it's very dense, yeah? The city is very dense, it's quite a lot material, yeah? And uh, therefore, maybe, yeah, it's logic that something like that, yeah, uh, is created, yeah? Is possible, functions, has some space, yeah? It's a, it's a, it's a dense, melting pot of leisure activities, yeah? And you, if you don't have them somewhere, yeah, then, uh, yeah, there's, there's a necessity for it, maybe, yeah? And, um, uh, of course, it's a, a wonderful imagination to have that also here uh, in Austria, uh, but the question is if it really would function, yeah? So if I now, think of, of, of the tenure running through, yeah, and, and uh, we have some areas to, to do leisure activities outside and so on, yeah. So, yeah, I would doubt a bit, yeah, if, if, if uh, people really then use it in this way, I think, uh, yeah, we, we, we would have to think it differently, of course, mm -hmm. yeah with other elements or whatever, much more green, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martin, so, may, I, may I ask you, because Sao Paulo is a very dense city, is a very huge city with, I don't know, 10 or 12 million inhabitants. And Harry just described to you uh, the public spaces that we have here in Vienna. What about public space quality in Sao Paulo? Do you have enough public spaces for people? Do you have squares? Do you have, uh, I mean, you don't have a huge river in Sao Paulo, but do you have parks? Do you have places where people can gather and hang around, where people can spend their leisure time in non-commercial spaces? Do you have that? Or is the SESC a way of a substitution for public space? Well, uh, we have some very nice public space. 
uh, but not enough, far from enough. Uh, when you see this uh, bordering of the city, not, not the especially central areas, I showed you some images. It's very densely occupied and very densely constructed, you know. That image that I showed you, where you can see the football field, this is the typical aerial view of the boundary, boundaries of Sao Paulo, you know. You don't have free areas, you don't have uh, parks, you have the football fields because they are really, really very precious. And also, can you imagine you have a flat land to be able to play football in a very hilly topography, what is very common of this part of the city? So, no, the answer is we don't have enough public uh, space. And also, the city is very big in terms of area of occupation. You have in the big axis, uh, east-west axis of Sao Paulo, about 70 kilometers, 70. So it's big distances, you know, that people uh, go every day, home, work, in big distance, took a big time. I mean, it's, it's not uh, easy the comparison. Uh, I've been to Vienna uh, once just but uh, about uh, 25 years ago, so a long time ago. But uh, it is very hard to compare. There is no comparison. I mean, it's, it's, it's really two different universe. You no, know, it, it, it's hard to... Uh, and also I was surprised and uh, that uh, I told you, Wojtek, another day, uh, I think Lenny told me that 60% of the of uh, the flats are housing, I mean, are public flats. People live, 60% of the people live in public flats. That is it's admirable, I mean, it, it's incredible, the condition, the social condition that uh, people can have uh, in terms of public support, you know? uh, in Sao Paulo, talking about housing, it's a lack, a huge lack. And, uh, and, the of and, and Harry has got a question to you, but just a short question, because you mentioned the 60% of um, public uh, housing. Uh, what about Sao Paulo? Is it mostly rental? Is it, uh, no. is it ownership? Is ownership and uh, I mean the public, I mean the housing is actually always we don't have a rental system. Okay, uh, Thank you. we start now to think about rental. What I think is very, very desirable and very interesting because sometimes uh, you the ownership of the housing. Uh, doesn't have much condition of keeping, keep the, the, keep it. So it's very hard because they buy the house in a, in a certain financial conditions, fine, but to keep it, it's another question, you know. So I think the rent is a very nice way of thinking the question mm -hmm. of housing. Thank you. So with the ownership and, uh, biggest public spaces in the favelas, which are the soccer fields. I think here we have a huge difference to Austria. Uh, Harry, you wanted to ask a question to Marta. Yeah, it was not really a question, so, because I also thought about it before. So, yeah, how maybe could you compare these two cities, or what could you compare, yeah? And so, as I uh, already mentioned at the beginning, it is this uh, uh, bringing up a potential f for a community, yeah, and uh, so there was in, in in Vienna. So there was this. Uh, we have this social housing, yeah. This uh, and it started so in the yeah 1920s, yeah, and the program. Funny, yeah, was a bit 
the same, yeah, so it looked absolutely different. You can't compare from by architecture, so it's nothing to do yeah, together. But uh, the program was more or less the same, yeah, so you have a kindergarten there, you have culture there, yeah, you have a, a swimming pool there, yeah, that they, they have built that everything, yeah. So uh, the goals to, to reach this community, yeah, more or less are the, the same, yeah, you can use them here and there, of course the materialization then is something different, yeah, but uh, the principle, yeah, so how you reach that, how you reach, uh, how you can uh, 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 have some community, yeah, it's not so far away, it's always the same yeah, in some way for, for hum human beings if you have the possibility yeah, to do that. Yeah. It's only uh, the tools are different yeah, and of course the outcome yeah. is different. Yeah. You just yes, because what is, is common is us, isn't it? It's you and us. <laughs> I mean, we are people and we have the similar, I mean, desires from life, from what we we can produce, mm -hmm. what we can achieve, what we can think, and what we can live. Yeah, if if we have the polit if the if we have the pos possibility, given from the politics, yeah, then it's possible. So I think that's really a main a main point. Yeah, uh, so the politics, yeah. Is is uh, is the main thing that gives us the possibility to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. In in which direction yeah. uh, architecture can develop? Yeah. So we shouldn't forget that. Yeah. So we we only can do that what is in our possibility to do. Yeah. Harry, you are referring, of course, to the first um, Gemeindebauten, to the to the Red Vienna, to the Rotes Wien, to the Solene Benz, at, uh, and Rainer Zeitlinger mentioned uh, in the beginning. When I look at the first buildings in, of the Red Vienna from the 20s, uh, we saw all that, what you mentioned. We had theaters, we had kindergartens, we had marketplaces. Um, libraries and washing saloons and so on and so on. And of course, life has changed. And today in social housing, we don't find any theaters anymore and no cinemas. Yeah. Maybe kindergartens mm -hmm. and maybe libraries where people don't go to anymore. Uh, so what has changed here? And my impression is that all the uh, services that we find, for example, in the SESC today, this is something that today in Austria we find in the Baugruppen uh, projects more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, Marta, just for you to know, Bau building group projects are those where we have, we have that in, in, in Europe, it's like a new system that is growing where people gather and they build an ownership group together and together, sometimes we're talking about 30 people or maybe 40 or even 100 people. Together they are developing their very, very own private um, social housing project. So libraries and swimming pools and, and little theaters in the basement is something that we can find today in a building group project, mm -hmm. but not that much anymore in subsidized housing. So what has changed here? Yeah, I think the, 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 the conceptual approach of the developers, yeah? So I think there we need some change. I, I, I think it would function, yeah? But uh, it didn't happen, yeah? So they forgot about it, yeah? They forgot uh, what was uh, the, main, the main things, yeah? For, for creating these communities, how to, to create, develop a city, yeah? Uh, that has the potential for community. Yeah? So I think this is the main thing. Yeah? And uh, uh, why, why I think since we have the problem in, in Vienna is since in Vienna uh, uh, there is quite, uh, uh, there, there are new areas 
developed yeah, uh, from the city. Yeah? So there were many buildings, so 10,000 people or something like that. Yeah? And it's a difference if you build in, in a city that more or less functions, yeah? then you can put inside the housing project and it doesn't matter if there are some more functions in it. Yeah? But if you start to develop uh, 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 city areas, yeah? urbanistic uh, things, yeah? uh, then you shouldn't forget of that. Yeah? And that, I think, is, is that's, that's the reason why we talk now about these things. Yeah? And, and uh, uh, you can see that in Vienna, that in some areas yeah, they started to, 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 yeah, to, to think of that at the beginning, yeah, when they when they developed it, yeah, so with the some we call it quarter houses, yeah, where there are some uh, uh, functions in the ground floor, so mixed use, yeah, you have to do that, yeah, and uh, I think that was that's the right direction, yeah, but it's only a beginning, yeah, and and uh, yeah, also the the, the developers, yeah. They, they have to go in that direction, yeah, much more again, yeah. Thank you. I will just have a... Yeah, but let me just make a comment in that. I think just, if I understood all correct, sorry. Yeah, my English is I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, is that because uh, you talk about developers? And uh, I think also, at least in Sao Paulo, I think about that, I don't know, in, in Vienna, I think the decision couldn't be just the developers to make. I mean, if people have more active participation or the possibility of participation, I think that is crucial, you know, in the production of the city. That is a question, uh, again, I think is very, very important. I don't know uh, there, but uh, that's a very curious uh, thing that's happening in Sao Paulo, for instance with the pandemic, the collective uh, organization, uh, spontaneous organizations, took much more power, you know. People start to, uh, in face of the ne such big necessities, you know, they started to organize themselves much more uh, actively uh, in participation. So I don't know if the decision is not the developers to make. I think it's crucial the participation of uh, us, of the society in general, in the decision of what you have to do and how you have to do and what is desirable or not desirable. Because when you think of, think of housing, of the house, the house doesn't, doesn't end in the, the doorway, isn't it? You, you can have a beautiful apartment, but if you don't find a nice city when you come downstairs, it's nothing, isn't it? Because the housing itself doesn't uh, make life possible. Just. Thank you. Marta, I think in this case, uh, Austria and Brazil are very close to each other. We're not allowed to leave all the decisions to the developers only. So I think we have that in common. Um, I don't know what the restrictions, the COVID restrictions are at the moment in Brazil. Uh, here in uh, Austria, we still have restrictions here. So there are not a thousand people gathering around here at the architecture center in Vienna, but we have a few. And I know you're not a lot of people here, but maybe there is an icebreaker who would like to ask a question. You're now having the possibility to ask a question to a Brazilian architect. Uh, who leads an office, and Marta, I would like to, to just mention that because I asked her two days ago on the phone, what exactly does MMBB stand for? So how many partners are you at the moment? And Marta said, well, isn't it obvious and clear what MMBB stands for? Marilyn Monroe and Brigitte Bardot. So I don't know if you want to be Marilyn or Brigitte, but who would like to ask a question to Marta? Do we have an icebreaker? No, we don't. I have to continue. Marta, I would like to, to ask you, 
uh, when we look at the SESC project, of also because the SESC is a huge client and that's an institution that is famous, uh, we saw uh, that people are talking about the project, that media is talking about the project, and we also have it in this book and in the exhibition, Critical Care, uh, by Angelika Fitz and Elke Kastny. What about the other exhibition, the Favela project that you're working on? Is there a media impact? Are people talking about it? Is it important to the audience? Or is this a project where you have to struggle for a certain attention? Well, I think there is a huge difference uh, that makes the two projects. One that says Vint Patri de Mai was built. So it's there for everybody to experiment and uh, to approve or not, to like or not, to comment and everything. And also, uh, there was Paulo involved, Paulo Mendes da Rocha involved, what makes a huge difference, not in terms of uh, divulgation, it's not what I'm talking about, but in terms of also the quality of the project. Paulo really is, uh, it's a strong ideas about how the city can be. I showed the croquis as an idea of city. Uh, Paulo used to say the city for all and uh, had this very humanistic uh, idea of uh, living in society. So I think all that makes a big difference in terms of how Sessing Pato de Mayo was more is more important, I mean, in terms of realization and uh, in, in terms of the interest of people in it. The Antonico Creek is, 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 is an intervention that is much more uh, hard to do because it took a long time uh, in terms of time and uh, in terms of uh, uh, how can you make it possible, you know? You need to, be, to have the public involvement necessarily because it's a, an infrastructure that has to be the involvement of uh, the municipality. So it's another time, you know? It's another uh, frequency of uh, happening in the process. So. Thank you. Um, slowly, I would like to be coming to an end, and what I would like to ask you, the both of you, is what can you learn from each other? What can the SESC learn from public subsidized housing in Vienna? What can Vienna learn maybe from the SESC? And Harry, you're working on a project that will be opened very soon, the Music Box. Uh, it's a um, residential social housing with some services for musicians where you can rent uh, music spaces. Um, there will be commercial spaces, maybe a certain kind of a hotel whatsoever. So you could say, and, and a theater, so you could say that the music box is maybe a little, little small sesk. <laughs> so question to you, what can you learn from each other? Who would like to start? I could, I could Harry, go ahead. start. So uh, I think what also when I saw your, your your lecture and what I thought about. So I think we can learn that to 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 think the leisure activities more conceptual. Yeah. So really as a as as a part that has to be planned. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's really something what I take from your presentation. Yeah. So because. It's uh, always easy if you have so much space sometimes, uh, you think that functions by itself, yeah? So you don't have to care about it, but it's not like that, yeah? You have to think that all together, yeah, uh, as, as, a, as a concept where society lives inside, yeah? Or which space we create for the society, yeah? And all elements uh, have to be thought, yeah? That's uh, also because I always, at the beginnings talked about this 
uh, architecture and landscape planning, and here are the buildings, and here's the landscape planning. Also, we have this uh, sometimes a bit fashionable, this point house, yeah? and then in between there is the landscape planning. Yeah? So I'm a bit critical about that. Also here, I think we have to bring that together. Yeah? We have to think that everything in a one concept that belongs together. Yeah? So that's maybe what I uh, could learn from your presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Marta. Uh, what so, what can you learn from what what you've heard today or what you've seen a few years ago when you when you were in Vienna? What can you, as an architect, what can maybe a client such as Sesc learn from the Viennese way of building of building public spaces and social services? Well, I think uh, uh, when when I I told already, when I know that uh, you people live in the 60% of housing, people living in that condition, I think I have, we have a lot to learn <laughs> from you. That is really incredible. It, it's really incredible. Another nice uh, uh, surprise for me is that in this process, uh, to the preparation of today, I've met Lenny Beng, that is German, isn't it? That's not Austrian. I, learned, I met Wojtek, that is Polish, is not Austrian. And uh, I don't know you about you, Harry. Are you Austrian? Are you Austrian? Yes. Sorry. Yes, oh. I'm Austrian. Yes. The, first, the first Austrian <laughs> I met. <laughs> no, that is very, very interesting, isn't it? That makes the society much more interesting. Interesting. So I understand that Vienna is a very international city nowadays, right? I mean, people from all over the Europe, I mean, living in Vienna. And uh, that's right, or that's not we, true? It's true, isn't yeah, it? So we, we say uh, an echter Wiener, so a, a, a real Viennese, yeah, is not, is not born in Vienna. <laughs> I would agree really? with you that Vienna is an international city and in a certain way, of course, Sao Paulo is an international city too. Both countries are not having the best way of politics and migrant politics at, at the moment. I don't know which country has the worst politics. Uh, that's not something that we're going to talk about now. But we do hope that Sao Paulo and Vienna both will keep being international cities. So. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing uh, your projects, your approaches to architecture, for also introducing uh, this internationally famous SESC project that you did together with Paolo Manister Hosha. Um, I just have to look to Lena. Shall I just close it? Okay. So, Marta, thank you to you. Harry, also thank you to you for being respondent today. Thank you to the audience here at the Architecture Center Vienna, and also thank you to you listeners, online listeners on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you are. Uh, this was the Iber Wien meets architecture number 11, today with MMBB architects, and when we gather around next time for number 12, we do hope that this we will not need anymore, or maybe we will need it to be more safe, we will see. Have a nice evening. Thank you for joining us and see you soon. Bye-bye.